Why is it worth it? Why is track and field worth fighting for in that sense? It's what I love. You know, you're going to fight for something you love. That's what I love. I have to go out there and show, that, show people that every person that runs fast is not drugged up. Every person that runs fast is not cheating. And I know that I'm going out there and putting my heart in that track and I want people to respect what I do because I respect others. You're in love with the sport. When you fell in love with the sport, did you believe in it at the time? I mean, as a young boy, presumably, you, you had no real concept of, of doping and, and drugs in sport, I guess. I do. I still love the sport and I still believe in the sport. You know, there's always going to be some bad apples in the bunch. And right now, people are more focused on the bad apples than looking at the good ones and seeing how prosperous we can be in track and field. Mm. It's fair to say, isn't it, that you've taken a fairly high profile with your statements about how sprinting especially should be clean. Well, it's because of a love for the sport, I guess, as well. Um, don't you sense sometimes, though, that you're fighting a losing battle, or do you think that this is a battle eventually that, I suppose it has to be in the long term, can be won? If I just have one fan who believes in me, that's all that matters to mm. me. You know, I have to go out there and show the world that I can be a champion. I can go out there and do it clean. You're sitting here opposite me now uh, in the same kind of mood and with the same kind of sincerity that Justin Gatlin sat opposite me some 18 months ago. And, and personally, I felt very shocked and surprised when I heard the news on Gatlin. And, and, and the problem is, of course, is that whilst you quite rightly say that you've, you've never tested uh, positive, the fact is now that, that there are substances out there for which there is no test. So the difficulty is in persuading a public, which is very cynical now about track and field, isn't it? In persuading them that well, you are yeah, that's it. It's hard to, to convince people, you know. No, they at least make it very hard to convince people that, you know, we're not taking we're we're, ta we're not taking drugs, you know, because, you know, as I said, they at least are being tested positive, like, like nothing. So um, it's it's very difficult for me, you know, I don't know what to do but to just continue believing in God, just trusting God and to just trust him that, you know, there's never gonna become a day that I will be i I'll be tempted to take take drugs. Yes. I mean sitting here and, and with the background that we both know and understand about Gatlin, you you'll understand why I will ask you this question. You know, have you ever taken drugs, either detectable or non detectable? Well, I've I can't remember taking supplements. I can't remember taking vitamins. So, you know, I don't try, I try to stay away from, from anything that can cause. That I don't, maybe a lot of things, um, there's nothing in them, but I try to stay away from them. I, do, I would drink water every day. Um, you know, if, maybe if I'm feeling a little pain, I'll take a ibuprofen or something like that, but never been tempted to take drugs. You, you famously said, didn't you, that you'd uh, fight to your last euro uh, in defense sure. of your name. Sure. Uh, are you really you prepared know, I, I to grew face up financial with, ruin? With, uh, my family taught me really strong core values, and, and the biggest thing was honesty. And to be called a cheater, be, to be called dishonest is the worst thing you could call me. You could call me pretty much anything in the book, but to be call, call me dishonest is, uh, is the worst. You're bitter and, have, and you're hurt, are you? Uh, I wouldn't say bitter, but sure, it hurts, you know. Just you know, for some, for part of the world that think that I'm dishonest is uh, yeah. it's a terrible feeling. How do you feel about the fact that you did lie so brazenly? Oh, I lied for 15 years, and I did a good job at it. You know, I lied. The more you lie, it's almost like the better you get at it. And uh, at the time, I thought it was the best thing I could do to to come back to the sport after I served my suspension. And I didn't want to get anybody else involved. And I knew if I came out and told the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth back in 2004, there would be a lot of careers on the line. A lot of, lo a lot of careers. Well, and, you, uh, you obviously then... Obviously, that was wrong. I wish I came out. You then did make the decision to tell the authorities uh, your entire story, uh, which, of course, is an enormously controversial story. That was when the federal authorities began their own investigation in, in 2010. What, what made you talk to the authorities in such detail? Yeah, it's a great question because, you know, I lied for so long. Uh, what, what happened was it was almost like the perfect storm. The, my old team, the U.S. Postal Service cycling team, uh, was being investigated for some, for their, uh, for their, during the, I think, 99 and 2000 seasons. Um, I was subpoenaed and brought in front of the grand jury 
And that's the first time I've really told the truth and the whole truth. And, you know, it started, it, the first 15 or so minutes of it was, uh, it was, the information was trickling out of me, and then all of a sudden it just began to pour. It's like I opened up. The case of the matter for me is, you know, to tell the truth felt, it was like a, you know, a thousand pound weight off my back. You know, uh, I didn't realize how, I was prepared to go to the grave with these secrets. I was, I was sure of it. I had moved on past cycling. I uh, was just moving on in my life, and I was prepared to, to die with that, those secrets. And that's when I, when I, standing in front of the grand jury is when I realized just how much of a burden this had been, had been to me, to me and my family. And that's when I, after, after speaking in front of them and after realizing how good I felt afterwards is when I said, you know, I, got, I need to tell the, tell the world the truth. I would never say that all athletes that compete at that level are dirty. I, I do think, though, that the overwhelming majority uh, of athletes that compete at the very top level uh, in preparation for major events like Olympic Games or World Championships, uh, at some point uh, in their preparation used some type of performance enhancing substance or method. And when you get to that elite level of sport and you've work so hard for a minimum of 10 years to get there and then you finally are told by someone that to go to the next level for those extra you know that extra tenth of a second or that extra meter you know in the shot put or whatever it is that you cannot go there unless you use the athletes have a choice either give up their dream that they've worked so hard to accomplish for 10 years plus or use performance enhancing substances. And not in all cases, but in the overwhelming majority, they will do whatever they have to do to be competitive. You won as a cheat. You won a terrific world championship time trial in 2003 mm -hmm. on drugs. Yeah. Did I, you take pleasure from that? No, I mean, I, I dominated it. And I, during the race, I knew I'd won it. And it was, it was like ticking boxes. It was just... A, business time it had nothing there was none of that, that, that those raw sensations you get that you're supposed to get from sport it should be a very pure uh, a very kind of existential experience but as soon as I was taking drugs and especially to the degree that I was firing on all cylinders doped up at that world championships it was too easy and it was I knew I was cheating I knew that all I all I was there for was to win so when you stood on that podium you got the garlands and the big prize what did you feel? Uh, not much. Not much at all. Empty? Yeah, it was, that was the thing, that there was not much feeling. So here's the question. You were always a, a very smart young man. You had many options in your life. You chose to go down the path of cycling because you were very good at it. But because you were a very articulate and smart and bright young man, why at that point did you not decide voluntarily to confess, to, to throw in this path, which you say was not satisfying you. I couldn't do it. I didn't have the courage to do it. I mean, if I, it was an end game situation. If I admitted I was going to lose everything, and by everything, I think the biggest thing for me, if we're going back to the pride and ego, I was going to be destroyed, My, this, this image that people had of me. I was going to be disliked. Uh, and, and, and that was something I, I, I was scared of doing. And so it was almost a, a sort of, a, self-sabotage by the fact that I kept those two last old syringes in my bookshelves and and there must there was a subconscious element to me that wanted to get caught but I couldn't do it myself I, mean, I, I had to get caught I had to have them catch me